Hello everyone, welcome to a completely impromptu live. Basically, uh, some people asked some questions, I thought it'd be cool to address them. And I have some free time right now between being very busy doing courses. Me and Sophie ran a course this morning, we're doing another course uh, this evening as well. So I wanted to fill that time productively instead of sitting around bored or stressing about it. So here we are, live again. Um, the birds may be a little bit noisier because I interrupted my painting time. Normally I paint sometimes in the afternoon when it's between work and then they will um, sing along some music and chirp. So they're probably angry at me about that. Um, yeah, so uh, very excited. So just to address something in the chat as well. So Louis does amazingly with one leg. Louis is also an absolute little beast and a demon. He... Um, Flies around. He's, he's an amazing fly. He flies around everywhere. It's just completely um, acrobatic, aerodynamic, whatever you want to call it. He just goes everywhere. But he also loves irritating the other birds. He loves um, peeping or suddenly making a noise to scare them. And he seems to enjoy that. He's also very cheeky in the way he takes treats, how demanding he is. He always takes extra treats in his beak when he can. He can just take one, but he always takes extra, pretends like he doesn't. So he may seem innocent and, oh, he's only got one leg, but Louis is an absolute monster and we love him for it he is the most confident little um, little one-legged conya we know and yeah he's just absolutely amazing such a cute little baby so as i said the purpose of this live stream mostly is to just ask some questions that cropped up from um the recent interview i did with jamie and jason if you haven't watched that i'd highly recommend it. it's a great interview sophie will also have one um, focus on nutrition coming out tomorrow which would be a great watch as well so i'd highly recommend you watch both of them because I mean, you know, how often do you get to watch a discussion with a, a, like a really uh, well-renowned avian vet, a very well-renowned biologist, and us as well, you know, I mean, we're just there as well. So it's really well worth watching if you haven't seen them already. Absolutely excellent, and I really enjoyed doing it. I know Sophie did as well, and we're both part of both as well. I Both me and Sophie plan to do more interviews like this with different sort of specialists and guests. Um, depends where we can get them and if they're willing to come on. But a lot of people seem quite keen to interact with us. So that's really nice because we get to chat to them behind the scenes a little bit and learn all sorts. And then you guys get to learn too. So let's uh, also, that's all right, ornithology. You know, if you if you can't do it, then you can't do it. You know, it's um, we'll talk about the course later. Though. Let's not get sidetracked. So that's that. So the first thing we talk about is in my live, last live stream, and I think it cropped up briefly in the interview about free flight. And a couple of people seem to think I'm anti-free flight, and that is not true. I actually quite like the idea of free flight. I like the idea of the freedom it gives parrots and the just the, well, yeah, it's just freedom. It's, it's nice and natural for them. However, this is where the however comes in. I wouldn't free fly my small parrots, and that's my personal choice. I don't think it's safe in our area. I don't feel that small parrots can be free flied as easy as larger ones. Now, if I had a, big, a bigger parrot like Macaw, and I had all the training I needed, which I'll talk to him about in a minute, I would probably give free flight a go. But I would want a lot of training before I even considered doing it, you know. If you want to free fly your parrot, be it small or large, make sure you do loads of training with that parrot at home. Ascent, des descent, sorry. Make sure their recall is really tight. Get them decent to the outside environment. Get them on a harness, get them in travel carrier, get them used to being out and about. Don't just take them out, even if whatever situation, expect them to know what to do. And if they get panicked, you still have that risk. No matter how well trained they are, especially a smaller parrot, you have that risk that your parrot's going to fly off and you may never see them again. And that's something you have to accept if you do risk it, even with larger ones. The other thing I'd recommend if you do want to consider free flights, not only is having loads of experience, but get training in it. Train yourself in it and get your parrot trained in it as well from a professional mentor. And I'm not just talking about someone who's had a parrot for a year or whatever, someone who knows what they're doing, has had parrots for a very, very long time and is very experienced with free flight. Those are the people you want to learn from because you can pick up a lot of tips, you know. I mean, me and Sophie can give you very basic advice, but we're not free flight trainers. We know an awful lot about parrots. We know some basics. But I wouldn't come to us for free flight training. I'll go elsewhere for that and come to us for everything else because, you know, we just know everything. But, you know, that's what I feel about free flight. I'm not anti it at all. I love seeing it. I watch Mike and McCaw and I love seeing their parrot and McCaws fly around. But I think it has to be done very, very responsibly. And that's where people may have misunderstood what I meant by that. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot involved and there's a lot of things you need to consider. If I was to do it as well, say, for example, hypothetically, I want to free fly with my large parrot. I would want them microchip or something to be able to track them. And I'm honestly surprised there's not more technology for this because it's becoming more and more popular to free fly parrots. So someone needs to invent something small that you can pop on them so you can track them. And that will increase the confidence and it will decrease the risk a little bit. 
a lot of people say as well, um, it's not, oh, sorry, that's the other thing. It's not just um, about training and all that stuff. It's about knowing the environment, having experience in it, because you need to know where to go, what places to look for, what dangers to look for, what danger levels there are. There's all sorts of things to consider when free flying. So do consider it very carefully. And as Sophie say, said in the chat, we have loads of birds of prey in our area. And I'd, I'd be terrified, honestly. I'll, I'd be terrified if something happened to our birds. But yeah, not anti-free flight at all. Just be very careful and make sure you know what you're doing and you have training and your parrot is well prepared for it. That's all. That's all I'm all I was saying in that. I said the baby's probably gonna be noisy, so forgive me. So that's why I would say on free flight. The other comment I went to make was um wing clipping. And someone said, Am I pro it? I, maybe I may be pro free flight to an extent, but I'm definitely not pro wing clipping. That came out in the interview, and I don't know if someone misconstrued what I said. Do not approve of it at all, unless it's for medical reasons. Um, I just don't think it has a place in our society. I'm going to do a video dedicated to it, and I'm going to talk about it in a lot more depth and give you know a logical argument for, pro, for the pros and cons. And I think there's a lot more cons than there are pros, and it's a lot of misunderstanding going there. Again, it's covered in the interview. You can talk about it in that, and you can learn a bit about that there. Just as always, by the way, guys, if you have any questions for like, general parrot questions, I will be doing a Q&A section towards the end of the live stream as usual i just like to sort of get all my rambling out right at the start then we have the birds out and then we sort of like explore other topics as well so yeah, that's why opinions on free flight that's covered wing clipping and then the other topic that cropped up is pellets again it always crops up people always ask about pellets or opinions on them so we personally don't believe that you need pellets to have a complete diet again video answers a lot of those questions However, if you want to use pellets, that's your choice. We're not going to tell you what to do in that respect. We like tops, for example. They're a really good pellet for various reasons. There are others that are sort of not as bad. And in many ways, um, it's better to have pellets than it is to have all seed. So if you're on all seed, pellets is a good transition. And maybe once you've done that, you can transition elsewhere. Having pellets as part of a balanced diet is not too bad, you know. It's just be mindful of them, you know. Mindful of what ingredients are in there. If they're brightly coloured and sugary, that probably means they're not good for your bird. So you might want to avoid them. If they have a decent pedigree, a decent ingredients list, then maybe, you know, you can mix it up a little bit. That is our opinion on pellets, you know. Um, I I try to take a moderate approach to it. If you want to have them as part of a balanced diet, go ahead, you know, because it's part of a balanced diet. So any sort of negatives in there will be mitigated somewhat by having the whole food, by having the vegetables. And that means any negatives in the pellets won't be as bad. But if it's all pellets, like we talk about in our nutrition course, it's not ideal, ideal for a, a variety of way. Uh, sorry, it's not ideal for a multitude of ways because of just this one thing. And again, I could go on about it for a long time. I've learned an awful lot about them recently. I thought I knew before, but just talking to Jason, talking to Jamie, talking to other people, learning ourselves, we've learned an awful lot about them. So, yeah, that's the pellets um, section that I dealt with now. So what else have we got on here? Positive reinforcement. So Jamie talked a lot about positive reinforcement in the interview. And most of you who are watching me should know what positive reinforcement means. It's just adding something to the environment to increase the likelihood that you what you want's going to happen. The most obvious example is a treat, and you want your bird to step up, you give them a treat, gives them more like there's more likelihood they'll step up onto your hand because you give them a treat. Uh, I just want to define that. And um, let me just double check what um yeah, so again, this goes back to something I say a lot. Always know your best treat and always reinforce, you know, keep up with it and constantly do it. Um, it's really useful to always be using positive reinforcement as your primary force of training. It is the main place you should look to. If you want your birds to do something, look to positive reinforcement. You shouldn't be having to force them. You shouldn't be having to um, catch them up. That is only in emergency situations only. You know, if there's an absolute emergency or there's no other choice, that is where you do that. If you want to do, say, for example, you want your bird to step up, don't go like that to them. Oh, there's a camera up there. Don't do like that to them. That's not going to help or work. You know, it may force them, but it's not going to build a bond or trust with your bird. Positive reinforcement will, will do. And Scampi clearly agrees with me. It will do it via um, building trust because they know they can get treats for you or possibly link you so they're happy to be on you. And they're getting something good. They're getting something good for doing what you want. So it's a win-win. You get what you want because you want to do what you want. They get something they want, high value treat. So remember your treat motivation there as well. Make sure it's nice and high and you know what your parrot wants to eat. And you also say, for example, a cup cropped up in a consult recently. Excuse me. Say, for example, um, your bird loves sunflower seeds. Don't put them in the main diet or have only a couple. It's not harming. It's not being mean to your bird. You know, you're not denying them it. You're just saving those treats and 
they're working for it instead. Still getting those favorite treats. Like for me, I have pizza. If I had it every day, I'd be bored of it. If your bird has sunflower seeds every day, they're bored of that. So they still get it. They get it for being with you. They get it for doing your stuff. That's just um, sort of clearing up some little bits in there. But I'm we're all about positive reinforcement, I'm afraid. That is our biggest training method. That is what we always recommend. And that we all 100% feel is the best thing for your power and the way to train your power. The best. You want to see fish, Ella? Well, I will. I'll have a quick glance at the chat now just to see if I've... Um, just try and catch up. Uh, 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 uh. So hello to everyone who's joining. Louis is being lazy. Louis is always being lazy. He's just off camera at the moment. I was hoping he would actually talk um, and say Kipling. Just before I started the live stream, he was constantly repeating Kipling, Kipling, Kipling without the bulging eyes. Or maybe because they do kind of have those bulging eyes, don't they? But yeah, um, he was saying it repeating. I was hoping he would do it on camera. So what I might do today is I may get the boys out a little bit later, but I don't think I'll be getting many parrots out. They've had a very disruptive day due to courses and work, but the boys may pop out and then the others will come out later after the stream and we can sort of dedicate some playtime to them because um, Sophie's actually dog sitting now for a very cute dog called Merv. And I'm on my own with the parrots and I don't want chaos during the live stream because it doesn't look very nice. It's not fun for them because I'm worried about them and this. So yeah. So maybe the boys, but um, they had some fun earlier. We did a lot of foraging, like running around the floor. The boys were staring out the window for ages and just looking out at the sun, which they really enjoyed. People and scamp insisted on their tour. So they have to have a tour around the house. And I think they're looking for Sophie and they're trying to find out where she is. They're wondering, well, why is she not here? And then Olive basically has her routine in the afternoon. She comes out, she has a little fly. Then she goes on the stand or she does some training and she has some snacks. And immediately after that, yeah, exactly, Chip. She comes onto my knee and wants cuddles and I can't break her from this routine. She just wants, she wants to exercise. She wants to train and she wants her cuddles. She has to have all three of them. She gets very grumpy with me and she's an absolutely adorable little monster. But yeah, she's um, definitely set in her ways. Yeah, Dara, my birds mean, mean too much to me as well. That's basically why I wouldn't do it with a small bird. I, I'd, um, I'd be just too worried. Me as well, parrots and wheels. It makes me sad as well, purely because I don't feel it's necessary. You know, there's so many things that you can do. Um, that's other than it. So, Dawn, what are the rules of thumb for getting a singing canary with green cheeks? I have two green cheeks, but would like a singing canary with the green cheeks frighten the canary is a bad idea. You can have a, a canary, a singing canary. Just make sure they're probably uh, introduce them slowly and make sure, obviously, they say cage separately, but I presume you already know that. Introduce them slowly. Make sure the conyers don't crawl all over the canary's cage and scare it. Uh, try and teach them um, just to behave themselves around and get them used to each other. Because in some, I've seen in some big aviaries, you actually do have them in the same aviary, but it's a big space. They can always flee from each other. So yeah, you could have them in the same house. Just be very mindful of how they interact. Oh, you changed, you changed your name again, Koki. Well, it's a nice name. I'm glad you've um, settled on one. Yeah, Guy, um, we're, we're having trouble with pellets getting tops at the moment as well. I think there's like a, too much demand and um, not enough supply at the moment. So we're going to grab some more tops when we can, because again, like we don't really feed much pellets, but we do like to have it occasionally if we don't have our, um, like a like a dry mix runs low or we don't have our chop ready. So we can just uh, pop in a few tops in there and it sort of tops it up a little bit. Hello, Mr. Teeny, welcome. Again, welcome to everyone who's just joining. Okay, okay, excellent. I've caught up. Does Chip have his double mohawk? I'm not so sure, Gina, what you mean by that. He's he's kind of just normal now. Um, he's been very fluffy today. Just they were sat sort of chirping and staring out the window and uh, fluffing up on my hand, which is very cute. So, Koki, how do you bird safe your room? Um, it's very difficult to entirely bird safe a room. So, um, just sort of common tips is make sure there's no dangerous uh, plants in there. Nothing live electrics. Make sure they stay away from any plug sockets. They're tucked away. Wires are a good thing to tuck away, especially if they have current running through them. Make sure there's nothing they can easily chew that's toxic to them. Um, sharp edges, that sort of thing. It's common sense, really, when you think about it. You look, at, like, look around. I look around this room here, and I can't see any live wires that are easily accessible. I can't see anything that's sharp that's accessible to them. I mean, I've got my keys, but they're hidden, and they can't really get to them. So you're constantly adapting. To bird safe a room, you're constantly keeping an eye on it. And then you have bird rooms, which people create. But the good thing about that is you don't really have other things in there. So it's very easy to sort of maintain it. When it's your own room, you're constantly having to look around and think, well, maybe that's a danger to them. Maybe that's not a danger. Maybe that is. And then sort of adapting to it. Right. So I've caught up on the chat. We're doing really well today. So we talk about positive reinforcement. Oh, yes. So there's one other thing I want to cover today. And that is um, the being naughty and our expectations of you guys, our fans, on live streams, patrons, everything. 
we don't expect anything from you guys. We're very grateful for you, patrons. We're very grateful for any money you give us. We were initially very reticent to do anything like that, um, ask for it anyway. We don't really want to ask for it anyway, but we thought we'd set up Patreon so we give and get, because that's kind of what we want to do. And a lot of people kept asking, asking, so we set that up. And we're happy to take money and donations. However, we don't expect them, and we will not ask for them because, you know, we whinge about money, but that's our problem, not your guy, you guys. You know, um, we're just grateful for any support we get, but we feel that you don't owe us anything. You know, we're happy you watch us. We're happy that you get education from us. That's all we expect. Now, if you happen to be a multimillionaire, that statement changes slightly and we'll be happy to get a little bit so we can set up a parrot rescue. But for most people, we're just happy for your support. So we don't expect anything from you. You know, we're just happy to have your support. And I hope that clears things up. You know, we never come on to these things going, oh, wow, we're going to get loads of loads of like money from you guys. We don't expect it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then Adara is like being naughty immediately. You, you, Adara, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to call you out, but you were saying you need to save a little bit. So maybe you should, you know, we'll be happy if you spent a little bit on yourself, not on us. And then that would make us happy. And you can tell us what you spent on yourself and that would make us happy. But thank you regardless anyway, Adara. Um, I wanted to cover that today because I feel it makes me, me and Sophie are like not used to getting anything from anyone. We're kind of used to doing everything free and then not even getting a thank you. So that's kind of where we're coming from. So you can imagine it's quite awkward for us um, doing this sort of thing and getting active thanks from people, active support. It's a quite confusing thing for us. We're not only British, but we're also um, not used to it at all. You know, we're used to just throwing stuff out there, effort and money and getting literally zero. So this is a new novel experience with us. So you'll have to bear with us on that one. Um, do I have I missed anything on chat? So I might get the boys out in a couple of minutes as well. Oh, peg it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. When they're in malt, it can be, it's worth sort of being uh, mindful of their flying. I mean, most of the time it's fine, but they can have difficulties. Like for example, pickles is molting and one of her flight feathers was quite loose. We're doing flight training. We noticed she kept on doing that with a wing. It's quite uncomfortable. So we sort of eased it up a little bit, tried to encourage her a little bit so she would maybe loosen it up even more. But if we noticed she was getting a bit funny with it, we eased up a little bit and maybe shortened the distances. It's up to you as um, the parrot's owner to decide whether you want to push them a little bit, see that feather comes out, or if you want to ease up a little bit, see if they can just preen it out so they're more comfortable. It's, um, it's entirely up to the bird owner, really, what they want to do, because it does vary, really, and wildly what um, will work for them. Hello, Anne. I'd love to train my bird to talk more. I was thinking of using capturing, but she's more talk, mostly talkative when she's overstimulated, which I don't want to encourage. How would I go about this? It's a tough one. So what this may sound a bit, um, yeah, you've already been naughty, Mr. Teeny. I, I messaged you about that naughtiness. Um, thank you again, though. Um, so, and where I'd go in that direction, it may sound a bit out there. So initially you start reinforcing during overstimulation to get those noises and then you put it on cue so, for example, um, Kipling, let me just give it a pip, kip, oh, okay, this is a perfect example. So Kipling does this noise like, ow, 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 yeah? That's one of his overstimulated noises. He does it very often overstimulated. So I started um, reinforcing it regardless. But then, after a while, I would stop reinforcing it when it's overstimulated. I'd only reinforce it when he's doing it other, um, in other situations on cue. So I would make the noise to him, ow, ow, ow. He would repeat it, I'll give him a treat. So then it's moved from being an overstimulated sound to being a sound he makes on cue, because I'm doing it. Does that make, I hope that makes sense as an explanation. So it's, I've kind of taken it or captured it and moved it away from an overstimulated sound, which I don't reinforce when he's doing it overstimulated anymore. I only do it when he is uh, doing it on cue from me. And the other funny thing about Kipling, he loves to talk, oh my goodness, if we could record all the stuff he says, he's like a cockatoo, the amount of stuff he comes out with. Um, he started saying big boy, gooey Louie, Louie, and then he just chats with me and Sophia chatting. But um, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's where I'll take it. Move it from overstimulated to on cue, and then you can capture it that way. Um, and, yeah, it's just Kipling. He's just such a personality. Oh, and that's another great thing about a little monster as well is he's finally stepping up on me and flying to me and not destroying me. That's always good. Um, I'm very pleased about that to make some progress again because it was a problem for a while. You know, He's a very anxious, overstimulated bird, so working with him is going to take a long time. But it's, it's always improving with him, you know, it's very cute. 
Louis is always lazy. The, I made another meme about him like laying down, and he's always laying down. But then at the same time, he may be laying down some other times he's flapping around like crazy and causing chaos in the room. Such a good flyer. And he's really getting like close to closer to me. You know, I can feel his kill my nose. I mentioned that on Patreon the other day. Um, he comes to me constantly asking for treats and trying to hide them in his beak, so I have to give him more. He likes his training. You know, he also we take Kipling and Louis into the bedroom now, so they're starting to explore the house, decent to the rest of the house. And um, Louis will like sometimes fly, oh, you can't see it, basically fly to Wally's cage and wait there for me to pick him up and take him, uh, follow Sophie and Kipling into the bedroom. And he'll sit there and keep looking at me and he'll just wait there until I pick him up. If he's really excited, he'll fly off. But yeah, it's, it's quite cute how he's getting, we're getting on very well. I'm just hoping to sort of nurture that relationship with Kipling as well. Because there's no doubt that Kipling does not hate me anymore, doesn't want to attack me. But he still gets very overstimulated very easily and very um, naughty. I love that as well, Gina. And I thought that video was going to be a viral sensation, but no one watched it. And I was like, this is amazing. It's Konya's throwing socks out of a drawer. What more do you want, you know? I mean, I don't know, a cock or two throwing pans? Oh, wait, that's been done already. Uh, I thought I find it hilarious. And I, I don't know if I should be encouraging it, but it's really, it's really cute. Me and Sophie love it. Oh, lovely guy. Um, it's, it's the best when they, they're destroying toys and crunching. Also, Mr. Teeny, a lot of that vitamin D. I mean, um, it's great to get the, um, your birds out in the sun. We were talking about vitamin D earlier in the um, in the course, and we'll be talking about it again later. And it's such an important thing. But you don't need a lot. You just need a bit, and then you, the bird will store it, and then they can use it later. It can be a diff It can be so difficult, guy, to train other people who aren't parrot people because they don't understand it. They're like, "Oh wow, he's talking. That's all I know. Parrots talking." They do, you like. Could you stop doing that, please? You know, they're overstimulating. They're like, no, no, he loves it. He loves it. And then, and then they, you know, they scream and it causes trouble. It's it's a problem so many people face. Luckily that we don't have to, we don't because we don't have many guests. And guests we do have are pretty sensible about it. I don't think they want to be destroyed. So I don't know, Anne. Why was it not a viral sensation? I don't know. Why is Louis not a superstar? I don't know. It's it's a mystery. It's a complete, um, it's a complete life mystery. Yeah, little Indian. Everybody's bird. Mine's a little butthead. Everyone's birds are butthead. That's their that's their um charming personality. They're so intelligent. They're absolute buttheads. Life of Koki. Have you guys ever thought about doing courses or info days? Like we get a ticket to watch a course, training session in a real, in a real life at a certain location. Um, you funny. So there's two things. Two things to say about that. First of all, we are actually going to be doing a live talk at an event later on in the UK. Um, I can't remember what it's called. So you may be able to remember it. Someone's asked us to do a talk. A couple of talks there, so we'll be doing that. So that may be possible in the future, you know. But the problem with the UK, it's a hard nut to crack, you know. A lot of people probably wouldn't turn up unless it's actually a big event. That's why we do the one-on-one -on -one sessions. That's why we started to do live things. There, there you go. So we are actually doing a course today, later on, Koki. We're doing a course on nutritional enrichment. We've already done one this morning, and we have tickets you can buy. We don't have many slots left for this evening. The morning was the quieter session, which is kind of good for us, so we can get into the swing of things. But um, we do have a few slots left for the evening course. If you want to learn about nutritional enrichment, uh, how you can apply it to your parrot, what it means, um, talk about various studies that have been done on parrots. I don't want to spoil it too much for people because people have already been on Discord and be like, oh, wow, it's good. And then like I said, not going to spoil it. So I'm not going to do it for you guys on here. Um, not tooting our own horn. I'm hoping you guys will enjoy it and it will be useful. Again, there are a few slots left. If Sophie wants to link it in the, um, in the chat, you're welcome. But once they're gone, they're gone, basically. We do have plans to do more courses. Um, also, some like documents as well. with just like uh, cheap documents with basic uh, quick references for you. Although you can just use our videos, but people seem to keep asking for them. So, yeah. Anyway, if you want if you want that, Koki, check out our nutritional enrichment course. Maybe worth you signing up for that because we'll be on and we'll be teaching live this evening. So if you're available and you've got a little bit of spare pocket money or whatever, you can have a, a go at that. Right. Let's have a little look at the chat. I think I've actually covered... Um, all of the stuff on my little sheet now. So it's just going to be the usual chaos bit. The birds will come out in a second. I'll leave them in for another chip stacky. I don't want to interrupt him when he's eating and then we'll get them out in a minute. Yeah, so pet parrot gathering in Stafford. So we're quite excited. It'll be quite good. Yeah, we're not big enough for, for like in-person events. Could you imagine? We've only got like 15,000, 16,000. In fact, between if we add up all our subscribers everywhere, we've only got about 50,000 over everything. So that's not that's really small um, in the grand scale of things. Mandy, I'm trying to teach my baby. Oh, Gina, you've already done this this month. You don't need to do it again. Thank you, Gina. But please, please, you, 
Oh, goodness. Thank you very much, Gina. You're very exceptionally naughty. We do not expect this every live stream. This is a bonus live stream. This is just, you know, for fun. Goodness. We have to do something for you, you know. We're going to get you one of these days. You'll be like, I'm just, you're just relaxing one day. Oh, yeah, I've just given them $20. I've, I've sorted them out. I've made them feel awkward. And then, wham, we know we know where you live. And I don't mean that in a horrible way. We do. And we may surprise you one day. So um, thank you again. So back to Mandy. Yeah, it's well worth constantly strengthening wings, especially if a bird's been previously clipped. Their wing feathers may be um, weaker. Um, sorry, wing feathers, wing muscles may be weaker. They may need training. They may need sort of like steps to get them to that point where they're happier. 20 years, blimey guy. Well, that's quite stubborn if they've been doing it for that long. Um, maybe a, a prod. Maybe you should target train them. You can redirect them away from the bird when they get overstimulated because that's a long time. I'm not sure. What my, I'm not, I, I can't really recommend anything. Did I say did I say 50? I said 50,000 odd, didn't I? Between all our stuff. Whatever. Whatever, man. It's all good. Yeah, so again, this is like covering almost covering for Sophie's live stream. So we've got a lot going on and lots of different stuff going on and some surprises. Yeah, just, just to allude to, we've got some surprises coming up. We have a little um, not just surprises about courses and stuff because you know that's fun, but we'll have a little announcement, a little video, and all sorts of things going on. I need to modify um some bits and pieces we're doing to accommodate with the teaching we're doing as well. So there'll be all sorts going on. I don't know if we'll turn up, Gina. I don't think we can quite afford that, but maybe something nice for you. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Thank you, Parrots and Wills. I'm glad you enjoyed the course. Um, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of positive feedback. I thought someone was going to be like, oh, that wasn't very good. But everyone was like, wow, it's really fun. I mean, that's more achievable, achievable, Anne. The problem is we can't even get, we can't even go on holiday at the moment because we've only just found someone who may be able to look after the birds reliably that we can trust. So, there's going to be a long list of traveling. Maybe by then we'll have, we'll have gone, maybe the socks would have gone viral by then. We just travel, do a world tour or something. Um, not sure what, how we'll do it. We'll probably miss these babies too much. Where am I? I'm trying to catch up on this chat and not miss anything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Jason's already um, offered us somewhere to stay if we want to go to the States. We can like do a States. I, I actually quite like America. Um, I've only been like very rarely, but I, I well, I enjoy parts of it. Um, I won't say any more because it's it's like upsetting. <laughs> well, and Netherlands, yeah. So oh, goodness, it's starting to scroll. So everyone's starting to scroll now. What have we got? In a national park, that doesn't sound very wise. Um, Ornithology for obvious reasons. Come on, Mallow to my bird. Leaves pods. I'll let Sophie cover that because I I've got to admit when I don't know, I don't know. So exactly, Klaus. We're we're pretty much the same. We haven't had a real holiday in a long time, a long time, and we kind of need it. So, Dawn, um, foraging, foraging is something you want to start off with very small, and then start moving up. Um, so, if you want to start your birds foraging, put some high value stuff on a plate or in a like foraging tray. And just get them associating that place with the treats. Then start making it difficult by adding substrate. And it, every bird is a natural forager. They all have to do it. So then you can sort of go up and then it gets more difficult. We actually talked about this again in the course today, the sort of process you, you go through to teach a bird to forage. And honestly, this is a natural behavior. There's lots to do. What have we got? Um, Whittle Indian. I really want to learn. Oh, I'm supposed to get the boys out. Let me one second. I'll, sorry, Whittle Indian. I'll cover this in a second. Come on, little man. I'll say hello first before I pop you on the stand. Hello, you big boy. You don't want to be there, okay? You want to go up here instead? Is that nice of you? What's this? You gonna harass your brother? <laughs> silly boys. Right, hopefully they'll be okay on their own. Um, so with Indian, I really want to learn about pellets. That's what I use because vets said seeds are only treats, but I use both. I can't wait to see what I'm doing wrong. So with Indian, we won't be covering the sort of truth about pellets, so to speak, in the course. However, if you haven't watched that interview we did with Jason, watch that. Watch my other pellet interview with Jason as well, because that will basically answer your question. You can make your own mind up. Um, it's the easiest way of doing it. So Nola, I just got my crimson belly conyers. The avia... Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know what that word lied about. His age told me he's very young. When he arrived, he's clearly an adult. I mean, that happens quite a lot. You trained him very quickly. That's also good. I mean, crimson bellies are remarkably intelligent and they're very keen. 
Um, maybe Parrots and Wheels. I like it. I like I like it up there. It's a nice nice country. I think I prefer it to England, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, yeah, um, it's all good. So, again, I'll get sidetracked. So I'm talking about two different things. So, yeah, um, Crimson Bellies are awesome. Just some of them are a bit bonkers. I still have to do my video on it, but I need to gather more research material about it as well. I know the feeling, Guy. It's a lot of us, a lot of us, Mr. Teeny as well. It's just the life of a power owner, isn't it? You know, you sort of like give up a bit of it. Uh, why is my chat Ella? I, love, I like love birds as well. I like loads of little birds. I love. I have a, such a, a soft spot for little birds, for smaller birds. I think small parrots are so underrated, not only for their intelligence but how cute they are and the things they can do. You see these big parrots; they get all the attention because they're big, and um, because uh, well, basically, they're big and, and some of them are more vibrantly coloured. Well, I was, I'd argue that conyers are easily as vibrantly cover, coloured as say a macaw or an eclectus, but. Um, yeah, and there's not enough love for them. And lovebirds are another example. And they're often misunderstood in their behaviours as well. There you go. But um, Sophie, Sophie's covered that again. It's, it's, um, they're misunderstood because a lot of people like to overstimulate lovebirds. And then like, oh, wow, isn't that cute? Amazing. But in reality, they're overstimulated and it's just not good for them. Yeah, Klaus, we love them as babies. They were so adorable, these two. Um, the, the chatting and the noises they made. Um, what they're eating um in there there's a little high value treat there's a few grains and a few bits just to keep just give them a snack so I don't want to overfeed them but i want to give them something that is like reinforcing and enriching for them while they're back there i think fish is going to want to come over in a second so i might ask him if he wants to do that uh what are they oh sorry so what we, we i want a budgie i love budgies i want budgies i know a lot about them as well and i i like to, i want to do videos on behaviors and sounds for you guys so i can sort of like convey that to you but i don't like using other people's footage um, or at least I, I want a first-hand reference for that material. So I, I, it's, that sounds really selfish. I want it to make videos. I, I love them. I think they're intelligent. And I, I just, again, such underrated pets. And it's incredibly smart talking. We watched this one on TikTok called Bobba, the talking budgie. The amount it talks and the amount um, Bobba knows is amazing. I love them. Do we have videos regarding um, CHOP, what ingredients you use and how to introduce it? We do, Tina. Um, there's a diet playlist that should be on the channel. Sophie also has... Um, loads of them as well. Uh, we we have quite a lot on chop. I, I sort of I've made a chop on camera so people can see what we put in. Um, we have ingredient list, all sorts of things. Um, I was wondering. So he's probably got the ingredient list link on her, one of her chop videos. But mine have just like basically just watch, watch our chop videos. We got loads of them, and we include introducing as well. It's well worth it. Yeah, please do share our videos everywhere so we can rescue a whole flock and have a giant aviary with this, this mob of budgies that every time we walk in, just fly all over us and cover us um, Do and have snacks. Right, no Sophie support for a few minutes. She's going into the garden with the dog. So, yeah, um, I'm going to be, this live stream is going to be slightly shorter. So I'm going to be on for another 15 to 20 minutes. So if any of you have any questions or any topics you want to discuss, please feel free to drop them in the chat, any sort of anything you want to learn. If you want to know a bit about more of the course, maybe you're considering getting those last two spots or whatever, let me know and I'll talk a little bit about what you're actually going to get for your money. Um, but in the interim, yeah, we'll just have a look at what the boys are doing, see if they actually want to come over. Do you want to come over, Fish, or are you still snacking? You're a big man, aren't you? He's a big boy. You're very big. You're a big man. You're a bit... Oh, oh, Hello. He's, he loves his tongue clicking. Oh, my goodness. It's so easy to encourage him. It's not even an overstimulated behavior anymore for him. He just does it because he enjoys it. I thought for most of the time it's just attention-seeking and, and um, attention-seeking and hormonal. But for him, he just loves it. Do you want to come over as well, Chibi? And thank you very much for being naughty. We had, we in, I don't know if you were in this part of the stream, but I was just talking about being naughty and how we don't expect it. So thank you. But remember, we do not expect it from anyone. We are very grateful for you. Um, so, yeah, we're very grateful for all of you and all your support. If it be it just saying that you like our stuff, sharing our content or more direct stuff like this, we're incredibly grateful and you are incredibly naughty. And so thank you very much. Are you in this? Are you in this? Um, hi, everyone. So new. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, yeah, we deserve it. Maybe I don't know. I, I, I don't know. it's getting getting funny. Okay, let's let's just focus on what people are talking about. Do you want me to give them a kiss on the nose? I don't know if they're all oh, fish. They always elbow you. I don't really kiss them on the um, beak. I haven't trained them, so he'll touch my um, nose with his beak. 
but I won't use my lips on his beach just in case. I tend to just kiss him there so I can feel his keel, and that's what I train them to do. And that's what they're most happy with because it's more comfortable for them and they're well used to it. I think when I kiss their beak, I think they get a bit more comfortable and don't really like it. Uh, Peggy, I just got Pete two new toys. I like to sit with Pete and introduce the toys by playing with them. Perfect, Peggy. It's a perfect example of a way you introduce new toys to a parrot. They like you. They see you interacting with the toy. They are thinking, wow, I want to play with that toy too. It's a great way of doing it. Dawn, what do you mean? Did you sign up to the did you sign up to the wrong course? Have you missed the course that you signed up to? If so, what we can do, um, when Sophie's back, we can talk about it a little bit later once I finish the stream. Maybe message one of us and we can maybe sort out and give you a link to the other one if you're available later. We don't want you to miss out. We're gonna make sure that you if you are interested, you actually get to watch it because you know it's important. Um, screeching with her beak. Are you talking about beak? Are you talking about grinding the beak? Um, is it um, is it like um, chewing a particularly like hard seed? Smooth kiss. Out. It's really hard sometimes to guess what people are um, trying to tell us in text. It's, if you want us to try identify it, try and give us a, a video clip. It's much easier. Thank you very much, guy. Uh, fish is adorable. All birds are cute. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure he's very cute. So new. Um, welcome to the chat. Do you have, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat as well. Do you want to see Chip up close, sweet Willie? You ready to come? Mm, you're a bit reluctant. Not too reluctant that you won't step up if I ask you. No, you want to go back. Do you want to say hello to everyone first? N no, I, I want to eat, basically. Okay, fair enough. There's Chip's opinion of you all. Yeah, it's beaky grinding. It's it's a it's a really common behaviour. It's a nice behaviour because basically when they they tend to only beak grind when they're relaxing, uh, when they're getting ready to sleep, and they're in a sort of fluffed up relaxed state. So yeah, I mean beaky grind, beak, we have beaky grinding. It's what we call it. Beak grinding is awesome, and we really love it. It's one of those behaviours that we love to hear. Some people find it annoying. We believe it's one of the most calming, relaxing sounds to us. When we hear a parrot grinding their beak, we know they're content, and it's really good. It is a relaxing sound. It is a, it's lovely. It's like um, ASMR almost. And you can see some people put some videos up. <laughs> put some videos up about it. And it's I like we just like hearing it. I don't think these guys are gonna do it because I don't think they're very settled. But they they're probably looking out the window, aren't they? Yeah, there's crows flying out. The good thing about so something I noticed today with these guys, especially, what's worth mentioning, is we did some descents with crows and stuff, and the Kony are still quite reactive to them. But uh, when we were looking at the window together, sort of sharing it, staring, they really didn't react. A magpie flew straight over them, and all they went was a bit skinny. So they're really quite um, used to those sort of noise. They were watching the pigeons eat, so I threw some stuff on the floor. Out, could we live like high, high up in the sky? Um, we flew some, threw some stuff on the floor, and they were watching. And they were watching, and they were really relaxed. In they're really good. Tina, where do we get that perch that your birds are on? I think we originally got it from Northern Parrots. So if you can correct me if I'm wrong, we love it as well. And we're going to feature it in our sort of um, birds disabilities video as a useful perch to have because I don't know if it's still available. It's really annoying because it's a really good one for all sorts of reasons. It's a bit boring in that you can't put many toys on it. Bird per, great way of saying it. Um, but as an actual general foraging, uh, training or just snacking, relaxing perch, it's really great because it's nice and high too. Yeah, it's a good sound. I mean, if you want to confirm it, you can always send us a, a clip, but I'm quite, it sounds like beak grinding. Mr. Tini, a, a, a beak grinding in the morning. That sounds awesome to me. Olive does it sometimes when she's cuddling me as well in her part of her routine. It's just lovely. I bet so as well. Definitely, Guy. It probably is um, as relaxing as that. Is he relaxing right now? That's very cute. It's Zoo Plus. Oh, it's a Zoo Plus. I wonder if they were gonna ever going to put... Um, like reintroduce it or someone else should make this this perch because it's so good it's just such a useful perch to have we oh on the on the perch from who who was it asked oh, uh, tina um i don't know if you've seen one of my recent unboxings not the one most recent one before that northern parrot hello fish northern parrots actually has a smaller tabletop one it has a tray on the bottom you can use it for a similar way a lot less expensive so maybe that'll fit the bill uh, maybe check that out and see if it's, it's actually useful to you. There's also a code, I think, still active. You can get a discount depending on where you are in the world. Uh, oh, fish, fish. Chip, do you want to join us? You do. His brother's being a big man, a big boss man on me. Ni Niza, who's, who oh, is who cuddly? Are we talking about these two or other parrots in general? Again, um, any questions? Anything else? Because I feel like I'm rambling now. Um, I know some people like to do that on these 
a lot on their live streams and people enjoy it. But I, I don't know. I can't. I, people have listened to me a lot already. Oh, they're um, Adara. Thank you, Adara. <laughs> naughty, naughty. If you could bring one animal back from extinction, what would it be? I what I would bring back probably isn't good for humans. I'd want to bring back the T Rex um, because it's a T Rex, so um, that would be cool. But I probably shouldn't. Yeah, Gene, the dinosaurs. Who wouldn't want to bring dinosaurs back? How awesome would that be? I mean, we kind of got them already. There's just mini version, mini versions of dinosaurs. Um, this, so, so going back to your question, Niza, these guys are fairly cuddly. They like their petty pets, although he's probably not going to want it now. You know, he's just in an excited mood. Um, sometimes fish and shit will sort of sit very close to us and relax. But cockatiels don't tend to be as cuddly as other parrots. They'll bow their heads to you. They'll nuzzle into you. But they're not cuddly like Konya. So they love their petting. They are affectionate, but I wouldn't call them cuddly like a Konya. And not all Konyas are cuddly either. And it does depend on the individual. Are rope perches bad? If I missed that, I'm sorry. Not all rope perches are bad. Um, so we like sisal rope perches. You can use cotton rope perches, but the big caveat there is you make sure your parrot isn't chewing them. If your parrot is chewing them, they have to come out because it cause, can cause a crop impaction. If they're not chewing it at all, it's less of a risk. Yeah, so but um, Sophie's already on the on the ball there. Bring back a dino, any dino. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, were they covered in feathers? Were they scales? Were they some sort of armor? Let's let's have dinosaurs back. That would be awesome, to be honest. I want to see dinosaurs. It'd be so cool to have. Are you barking at your brother? Or are you barking at me? Are you barking? I'm glad they decided to come over. Yeah, they're, they're, he, this is the boss man. This boy is the biggest boss. Um, it's just literally the bosses man. Right. Oh, so Whitley Indian girl, I missed your question. So I have an adjustable perch, but she won't stand on it. She won't stand on her T stand anymore. She's scared of everything. I don't know why. You may need to do more decent. Use those high value treats. So reserve a high value treat and get her used to them. You know, interact with them yourself. Um, do it in small steps as well. So don't just thrust her onto those perches. Get them close. Get her close to them. I wonder if fish will let me. Thank you, Fish. He's such a good boy. So say, for example, Fish is more scared of this perch, but he's not. I'll bring him closer until he start getting a bit nervous. And then I'll wait, wait for him to calm down, give him a treat, and then start bringing him closer. So use your use the tools that you learn from our videos. You know, Use negative reinforcement, which is taking her away from it or taking it away from her if she's scared of it when she's calm to encourage that calm. Reinforce her for going near it. Reinforce her going on it, and hopefully that will help. I hope that covers that uh, concisely. Oh, we, we are a dora. That would be kind of cool. A mammoths are kind of cool, don't you think? Um, Gina, I have a question on avian teas. Is it good to use the tea as a dry mix into food, or is it better to brew, chill, and then serve as a real tea? I think in terms of benefit, it's better as a tea, a real tea. However, there's nothing wrong with putting it on a dry mix. We do it routinely. I routinely add a bit of extra chamomile onto their dry mix, especially during hormone season. It takes the edge off a little bit, and they enjoy chewing it. We caught fish having a good chew on it. The conyers love it as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's completely fine to do it either way, but having it as tea is actually slightly better. Uh, so Dawn, so Sophie's taking care of Dawn's problem. You, Ella, you should be using treats for foraging. Yes, 100%. Foraging should be a fun activity, especially initially. You want them to want to forage. Foraging is a natural behavior, but when the parrots are pet parrots in the home environment, even though it's sometimes instinctual you may need to encourage it because if again if the food's easily accessible although this is in the course as well this might contradict some of the studies that were in the, that we feature in the course may contradict a little bit you know you want to use those high values to encourage foraging and get it but again don't want to don't reveal too much there guy cats would you be uh are you talking about for people with disabilities or the bird that has this bit we can do either we can do both so yes we can definitely do either or both we're doing i'm doing a video on helping birds with disabilities uh why i feel that they should be given a fair chance because there are some vets that argue against that and giving some case studies um parrots on wheels is going to be featured in that video along with a couple of other people so i don't want to be just me talking from my limited experience of it i want everyone to learn from other people's experience we can all share what we know about it and yes guy I certainly consider that it may be the patient exclusive i may put it on the main channel i'll see what sort of uh, research i can do and uh, maybe get some people that can contribute to it so i have a couple of people in mind who could help with that so 100 percent could do that uh 
Uh, Peggy, I bought lavender for people who didn't like it. It's very fragrant, maybe only a add a few bits to food. You may have to keep introducing it to get them to try it. This is something we encounter a lot with a lot of people. You just, people introduce things once or twice and they assume the bird doesn't like it. The bird doesn't know it. They don't know it. Sometimes it takes a while to, to get a bird eating something. For example, Scampi did not like rose initially. He was like, what is this? Just throw it out. Now he routinely shreds it and chews it up and enjoys it. So it's well worth keeping in mind that you may have to keep on persevering and keep on adding it to get them to actually try it. They do scream with excitement. When Sophie comes in, they're probably going to kick off. So I'll probably maybe stop before she comes in. Unless you want to see it, it depends. I might stop just after she comes in, so maybe you can hear it. I'll pop these boys back in as well. Um, because they're just kind of chilling. They're pretty relaxed, aren't they? Not you, Pickles, though. You're getting so stressed about. Righty. Excuse me. Yeah, we love it um, when they get excited as well. Like I came in um, last night and even though it was dark and we put the music on, they were quite excited. Yeah, they're still there, just um, chilling out now. I think you can see both of them. Chip's just sat on his perch, fishes at the back and just relaxing. Yeah, it's not very far. She doesn't have to come very far. Ella, if you don't have wood toys in birdcage, the boy will destroy your furniture. Yeah, if that's very true, Ella, because if they don't have things to exhibit behaviour on, their natural behavior, which is to chew, explore with their beak, they're more likely to chew your furniture. You know, having appropriate toys for all different sized beaks, be it large, small, does help with chewing problems and also making them interested and in having lots of fun. Ferrets, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that's a long, <sighs> the problem is it, it, there's no like, um, there's no time scale. That's the thing. They may just not like it. Or you may have to keep trying or you may have to try different things. Um, that is a good long time to try it though. So maybe, have you tried breaking up the star anise as well? Um, we found that Louis and Kipling weren't so keen on it until we started breaking it up and having little seeds separate from bits. Yeah, but that, that is like kind of the point where maybe you think, mm, I don't know. And also spices are great for parrots, but they're not essential. So, you know, if someone said that would chop, I'd say keep trying with that. It's up to you, really. Budgie girl, do you know why my budgie banana has been picking her wing? Um, that could be for a variety of reasons. I'd be it'd be worth checking if there's any injury on the wing. It'd be worth checking if she's molting. It'd be worth checking if she has a, a feather shaft that's broken. There's loads of reasons for that. Um, it's also worth checking for mites, potentially irritation, skin, loads of things. Sadly, um, I'm not sure I, I could actually give you an answer to that. There's loads of things. I would look at her very carefully, see if there's any irritation or injury. That's the first place. Then look at any skin irritation. Look if there's any feathers loose. Um, if you're still concerned, maybe go to an avian vet and get her checked out to make sure that you know there's no problems with the feather or like or whatever. <laughs> they are always on a sea can destroy a permanent sea can destroy. Yeah, guys, a good way of doing it. Excellent. <laughs> Joe, it's a very good quote. There are two ways to do it. You entertain the beak, or the beak entertains you. Yes, and the beak entertain can sometimes be painful. Yeah, um, thank you, Peggy. I don't know how that started, but yeah, we kind of went for a chip shop theme with all our parrots in, in terms of what they were named. And I don't know why it stuck. However, obviously that stopped with Louis and Kipling because um, we didn't want to change their names because we liked, we knew their previous owner and we didn't want to change it. So we we kind of broken that tradition, but we're happy with the names. I think they're very cute. Yeah, the little stars out of the shell can help. I cut them both up. Again, ferrets, maybe it's worth, um, it's up to you. You can persevere. But it's not essential. Spice is just an addition to the diet. They're not an essential part of the diet. If it was chop, I'd say just keep going, basically. Guy, my bird started eating an eater when it wasn't part of his usual diet. He's only eating the open pods, not the closed ones. Again, yeah, presentation can make a big thing. Yeah, because sometimes they think it's seeds. Um, I think, I wonder if that was Louis trick as well. It was the same. It's very interesting how different different ways can help sometimes. And you have a sort of eureka moment when your parrot suddenly likes something that they hated before. Um, a quote I've lifted from Jason is having parrots is a big experiment. And I 100% agree. You know, it's a big scientific experiment. We're always learning. We're always trying. And that includes the training, includes the enrichment, includes the food we're giving them as well. You might have to keep on experimenting for a long time before you get a result. It's a perseverance. It's a, a marathon, not a sprint, basically. Where did you? Uh, sand purchase can irritate a bird's feet. Yeah, sand perches can. There's a difference between a sand in a perch and a sand perch, though. Keep that in mind. Some perches are made from uh, natural materials like um, seashells and like can be properly cleaned and stuff, and they're fine. But yeah, it's the ing that helps with the sand. Yeah, so you have to be careful with sand perches. 
so I was actually going to leave. I'm going to stay on just in, I'm hoping I can stay on just until Sophie comes home so you can hear the birds and how noisy they are when she comes in because it's quite funny when either of us come in and how um, excited they get because they know, they learn. Yes, how do I know when I've gained my bird's trust? When you've gained your bird's trust, they're happy to step up on you. They're happy to be with you. They don't feel threatened or exhibit fear behaviours when they're on you. They will take treats from you. You know, it's the sort of things, if, it's like if you meet a friend, you know, and that person's happy to shake your hand. They're happy to spend time with you. They're happy to um, talk to you about um, their problems. I suppose they're not really equivalent for the problem talking, but maybe just relax, being relaxed around you. You'll know, you know, the parrot will show you when they start to trust you. And also you'll notice they'll start moderating their bite force a little bit as well. That's a common one. So Niza, I, I apologize. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Are there any resources on nutritional requirements for parrots? Very good question. And also very difficult one to answer. So a lot of the arguments we hear for pellets are that there's studies on pellets and that parrots have been studied with it. It's not really true, I'm afraid. A lot of studies have been done on chickens and those um, studies have been used to base nutritional requirements for parrots. So those chicken studies are what most people are quoting when they're talking about nutrition studies for parrots. The problem is there's not enough funding for it. We can guess at, so the best, so again, this ties into our course later and the course we did earlier. This, we, we can look at a natural history. We can look at what they eat in the wild. We can analyze how much they eat and sort of like start to make um, judgments on it. We can take small samples from birds in captivity of flocks. But to get it onto the really minute eye, it's very difficult to do. And this is something I'd like to explore in the future and maybe like collaborate and help people with, um, like Jason, for example, because I find it very interesting. So the answer, I hope, I'm sorry, that's not a, that's a bit of a circular answer. The answer is yes and no, basically. There is some basic information, we can guess at it, but if you're looking for specific studies that go into the very big details, like we're talking about a spreadsheet table where your parrot needs X, Y, and Z vitamin, no. But we can sort of think about how much ma uh, macronutrients such as proteins, um, carbs and fats they need based on their size, estimate based on various factors. And then you just add in a lot of diversity to cover all your bases in the micronutrients such as vitamins. I hope that answers that question. Um, I, I try to make it as concise as possible rather than rambling about because there's a lot to cover in there. Uh, Mandy's, I really want to get a ring neck, but I've heard that they're not good to keep with green cheeks. Um, that depends, really. Um, it depends on your space, if they'll have their own sort of areas, if you're willing to put the training work in so they will interact peacefully with each other. You, I do see green cheeks interact okay with um, ring necks, but I certainly would not cage them together due to the size difference and the potential risk of a bad injury. So ring necks beak is going to take a conure apart and a conure can do a lot of damage to a ring neck. So if you wanted to consider it and you're committed to it, you could probably manage it, but just make sure that any interactions are outside the cage, not inside, unless you have a big aviary. That's where you're going to want to do it, not in a small cage environment, because I've seen some horror stories and people and also make sure any initial bonding is done very supervised. Oh, that's perfect. Amanda. I mean, you, you, I've, I've seen you in my live chat before. You seem pretty sensible with the way you approach things. So, yeah, if you want to do it, explore it, you know, but um, just be just be careful about it. Um, you've probably seen my videos. Um about bonding, maybe rewatch them, get some tips on them. We have them as well, Guy. We have loads of wild ring necks. They've um, exploded as a population in Europe and the UK. They're thinking of getting rid of them in the UK, which I don't like. Maybe they should instead like offer people they can look after. I'd rather they were in an aviary in a collection rather than just gone. It's our fault that we someone, some irresponsible person introduced them to our environment. They thrived. It's not their fault. They're just living their lives, and I don't think we should deny them that. They're not really um, denying other birds their lives either. They're invasive, but they're not causing much harm. This is a bit of a nuisance, I guess, to, to some people, which I find very annoying. Right, guys. So you may have a couple. I, I may have a couple of. Uh, bleh, I may have a couple of minutes for a few more questions, and then I'm going to be wrapping up the moment. Sophie, well, about a minute after Sophie comes through that door, because I just want you to hear what it's like when one of us comes home. So if you have any sort of uh, last minute birding questions you want to ask, feel free. Remember, uh, I think one of those spots is now sold because Dawn was talking about it, but we do maybe have a couple of spots left for a nutritional enrichment course this evening. If you want to join in on that, there is a uh, link in my community. There'll be a link on our, our business page. There's a link on Instagram. Uh, is the last couple of spots now. So if you're interested in that, feel free to join. Um, it will be good. Hopefully you'll get lots out of it, especially if you want to learn about nutrition and enrichment and in just how they combine and do really well. Hello, Tori. 
Uh, welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to be wrapping up when Sophie comes through, but welcome anyway. Um, you can always watch it back. So, yeah, so you actually caught, caught us anyway because I'm just literally waiting for Sophie to come back so you can hear. And she's taking the time walking. I can't see her out the window yet, which is kind of good, I guess, because I get to sit here for a little bit longer and go on. Oh, still, we're still okay for time. It's not too bad. I've got plenty of time to prep for later and still actually eat something and make sure the birds. Are you still there? I'm, I'm hanging on for you to come because I want um, everyone to see what the birds are like when you come through the door. Yeah, sounds a good idea, guy. Getting prepped for the course. That's what we'll be doing for these guys. We'll be giving them extra outings early, making sure that they're they're like well settled and relaxed. So they'll probably be going to bed before we start the course. They have an early bedtime because they had a little bit of a late one yesterday due to various things and me getting in a little bit later than I expected. So, um, yeah, it's a great idea. Very close. All right, so give me one second. I'm gonna unlock the I'm gonna unlock the door so it's easier and quicker. Okay, so we've been keeping the door locks. We had a little bit of an incident recently, which was a bit scary, which I won't go into because it's not need to deal with that. Offer a bath as well. Niza, what is my opinion on bird tricks? Um They've do produce a lot of decent material. There's been a lot of controversy I'm aware of about them recently, but me and Sophie try to stay away from that um, because we don't want to get involved in it. We don't want any slanging matches between fans or people getting angry. So they they do they have produced a lot of material. They have contributed to the parrot community. There's no denying that. Do I agree with everything they say? No, I'll, I'll not agree with everything they say. But you know, um, we're not always going to agree as parrot trainers. You know, we will have different backgrounds. We will have different education levels. We will have different experience with parrots. For example, they're very good with bigger parrots, whereas I feel we're much more experienced with smaller parrots because we just had them for such a long time. Uh, so, yeah, Sophie's not a fan of running. Tina, my green cheek's talking to fish and chip. I can't hear anything. Just let it, he takes breaks from yelling. <laughs> oh, dear, is he just chatting away? Is he doing the Konya chorus and chatting and enjoying himself? Door and the, door, the birds are better than my dogs, letting everyone know. <laughs> so, Jay, good timing because we're going to be wrapping up soon. Any tips for getting cockatiel back in a cage? You start acting up when it's time to go back in. Making sure that going back in that cage is appealing. I've got a video all about that, specifically about cockatiels. It's well worth watching my channel, Jay. So if you get a chance, watch that. It's got some good tips on it. Make it reinforcing. Make that cage a bedroom. Make Don't see that cage as a cage. It should be a bedroom. It should be a great place. He should actually feel happy going back in because he knows it's very enriching, lots of fun in there. And it should be reinforcing. So make sure he's getting a reward every time he goes in there and do training around it. It's all sorts, it's all covered in the video. It gives you lots of stuff. I love the Konya rambles as well. I really enjoy it, Gina, when they start chatting when I'm listening to music and I'm just like enjoying my thing, just hearing them chatting to each other, all communicating. I was joking to Sophie earlier that um, us humans can replicate Konya sounds. She was like, Well, you could be swearing at them for all you know, you you know. But you know, some of their sounds are quite easy to imitate. And it's quite interesting how I can almost encourage calm in our conyers by doing some sounds and I can get them excited by doing other sounds. Not that I do it very often. And it's quite interesting. I really do like conyers because they're very expressive. Um, they may not have a crest like a cockatiel or a cockatoo, but they're much more vocal in expressing their uh, likes and dislikes, whereas a cockatiel may not do it all the time. Joe, Kiki seems to have a problem settling down or at bedtime. It could be a lot of reasons for that. Tori, my Konya hates my sister's lovebird. Would he do better with another green cheek? Yes, yes. Um, lovebirds are great, but they don't always get on well. Konyas and lovebirds are very uh, angry little creatures. They have such so much spice and personality to them. So it's very, it's very cautious. And you can also, you know, you can work on the relationship between them as well. So you can do lots of training. I've got videos on, you know, introducing and training birds. You, we, me and Sophie always say you can at least train tolerance between parrots. That is the minimum you can achieve. If you get more, great. But tolerance is basically a base level you can achieve with enough time and effort. It's almost always possible to get tolerance between two parrots. I very rarely see a case where you don't. And I don't think we've had one yet in our consults where it hasn't gotten that level with enough work. If we don't put in the work, we're not going to get the result. If we do, then you do get it. More like yelling to you, no idea. Mandy, I don't think I've heard of that one, Mandy. I might have to have a little look. I don't always, I follow quite a few bird accounts, but there's some I don't. Um, okay, cool, I'll have a little peek. There's some I, I avoid and some I, what is this? It's, they're, showing, they're showing off, they've been so well behaved. Literally, Sophie just walked through the door. 
and there's literally no ground, nothing. Oh my goodness. I go. I can't believe how quiet you are. Oh no, it was all that build up for absolutely nothing. Hello, the 99 All that build up and literally nothing. They like, always scream when I come in. Goodness. Oh, you should have heard them yesterday. They were going absolutely you bananas. Know, they, they were screaming yeah. away. Maybe it's because I'm they're used to this routine. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, guys. Anyway. That'll be the last question I'm taking. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I need to wrap up so we can get our lunch, get these out, make sure everyone's happy. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Um, we'll always let you know on community and via Instagram stories when our next live is. For those of you who are joining for the course later, we'll see you later for the course. You can hear more of us talking lots. Isn't that fun? But at least Sophie will be breaking up a little bit. So in the meantime, guys, uh, take care and have a really nice day.